buying items in RuneScape has never been easier, but today's video is going to focus on which items you should be buying first within RuneScape and what items I think a lot of people miss out on within the game. Let's get into it now. Obviously, there are items that will get changed in terms of your preference list depending on how you play the game but the first set of items will be combat and slayer related items that will just help you off in almost all regards of combat and slayer and pvm in general or whether you're doing high tier bossing or maybe you're just sitting back and afking some slayer probably the best item that i've ever used uh, at least with regards to combat is the blood amulet fury which i picked up a long long time ago now probably five years ago maybe even longer uh, but that allowed me to basically trade off potentially getting to level 92 prayer to get soul split instead i often used the blood amulet fury to be able to kind of counteract the fact that i didn't actually have 92 prayer of course i would 100 uh, implore you to actually go and spend your money on getting 92 prayer and if you can combine both the blood amulet of fury and soul split together it basically means you can afk a lot of slayer tasks and that was a key way of making money throughout the time so if you're interested in more of the money side spending about 20 million to purchase the blood amulet of fury using a blood necklace shard and an amulet of fury costing total combined yeah roughly about 20 million gp as of the recording of this video of course if you're watching in the future the prices may vary they may go down they may go up depends on the kind of releases and potential releases of items that may incorporate the blood amulet of fury later on as far as actually buying it it is definitely an upgrade worth spending your money on i would recommend maybe going towards getting 92 prayer it's not going to cost you an overly uh, fortune amount in order to do that and combine them both together you're probably looking at about maybe 80 million to completely do prayer and be able to get this uh, blood amulet of fury which to be honest with you I think is something you should always do and the longer you put it off the more of a hindrance it becomes and if you just get it out of the way to begin with I know spending that much money at the beginning of your account is always an annoying thing but yeah it's definitely worth it in the end. Somewhat linked to the combat item that we've just mentioned in the Blood Amulet Fury, we have the Luck of the Dwarves. This is, of course, a tier 4 luck ring, uh, the second highest tier luck ring as well. So, you, of course, you then have the Hazelmere Signet Ring, but that's a little bit overpriced in my opinion. But anyway, Luck of the Dwarves, 71 million at the current price uh, of this video recording. So that's what it's going to cost you if you want to go out and purchase it. Yes, it is very expensive, but it is very, very useful over the career of your RuneScape account. And it's something you want to go towards at any point uh, that you can really, if you've got some spare cash lying around purchasing one of these, although, you know, being boosted up in the prices by the alchemical onyxes going through the roof. Um, yeah, I think that they are very, very useful. And to be honest with you, over the course of your career you'll probably make the money back because of the rare drop table boosts that luck enhancers basically have from both bosses monsters things like archaeology from picking up extra xp books from that archaeology and potentially getting extra um, drops from some of the rare things whilst excavating you also have treasure trails so clues where you can basically hopefully get extra drops when you're going through your clues which is really really useful it helps you get more money and indirectly you know you could potentially get a hazelmere signet ring from having a look at the dwarf so that's the only re real way of actually getting it so if you don't have one you're not going to be able to even have the chance at getting some of those and so definitely purchasing a luck ring is one thing that you should be doing whenever you're doing anything you know most of the time when you're doing a lot of skilling activity, so archaeology, mining, blah, 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 you don't really need the ring slot for a lot of things. And so replacing it with a luck ring literally just means that you're going to get basically better GP per hour, potentially because you're going to be getting uh, a better chance at getting those rare drops from whatever you're doing. And often a lot of the time because of the boost of the luck of the dwarves, you're going to be able to actually earn uh, or have 
pretty decent statistics from the ring. Not necessarily best in slot, but it is up there with a lot of the other rings uh, and that you can actually put on your uh, player as part of your equipment. So yeah, I think it is a very, very good thing that you should probably go towards if you are really looking to upgrade your account in any kind of way with this guide. A set of items that you will be looking to get, especially if you're a skiller, in order to max your account or potentially speed up a lot of the activities that you're going to be doing. Or if you really want to maximise and be the most efficient within RuneScape, then you will be wanting to get yourself some harmonic dust. And that is basically the currency in which you can convert things into crystal uh, weaponry, armour, teleport seed, or potentially uh, any of the crystal hatchets, uh, mattocks, anything like that regarding both mining, um, woodcutting, archaeology, all of those have their own specific crystal uh, tool. And basically, once you've got that crystal tool, you can then advance that tool into potentially getting the mattock of time and space, the pickaxe of earth and song, and going back to the teleport seed, the attuned crystal teleport seed, which allows you to teleport to each Priftinus Clan District, Temple of Light, Lietia. Um, you also have various different other teleports that you can go to, and this really does speed up a lot of the um, skilling activities within Priftinus. If you are going for that, or if you have completed Plague's End, this is something that you will be wanting to get in the long run, especially if you want to progress your skilling grind. And yeah, this is a fantastic thing to do, and it is something I can't only really push you towards um, as early on in your RuneScape career as possible because it really saves you a lot of time and in that time that you are using uh, all of this to get harmonic dust you can use the uh, traveling merchant which often sells every now and again bundles of harmonic dust and once you've already maxed you really don't have a reason to go back and grind out a load of harmonic dust to get some of the tools that maybe you should have to speed up the overall process so the earlier that you get them the more of an impact they will have and they'll save you so much time in the long run because you won't have to use a dragon hatchet instead of a crystal one Another super, super useful item, especially for you skillers out there, apart from the fact of the harmonic dust. Uh, this one is probably more beneficial in the generic sense of being able to just use it for a variety of different skills that really does boost the overall experience and the way that you can basically earn money doing skilling as well. So this will be able to earn you some money. And that is, of course, Grace of the Elves. This is the necklace that has the ability to attune to different Max Garden teleports. And so, yeah, you can get two teleports to specific locations that cost you absolutely nothing to do that. And so you may even be able to teleport uh, using fairy rings if you attune it to the fairy rings or potentially if you want to then unattune it and reattune it to different areas within the max guild it is possible to do so. But make sure that you do attune it to the ones that you think are going to be the most beneficial to you. Uh, it is an untradeable necklace once first equipped so once you've spent the money on it you will no longer be able to basically ever get your money back and currently sitting at 72 million gp it is very expensive but it is definitely one of the things that i think will help you out a lot and although a lot of these have been necklaces they really do help out so so much when you're doing the variety of different things now why is grace of the elves so useful well it basically provides you um the ability to use um a lot of the Seren prayers for half prayer point drain. So if you're using things like uh, light form, super heat form. So if you're doing things that require any of those, whether that be wood cutting, if you're crystallizing uh, different things, maybe if you're doing crystallizing gremwalls or whatever it is that you're doing, you can basically half the prayer point drain. So you don't have to use a lot of the um, prayer potions. You don't have to carry any of that. And if you combine it with the fact that you can get potions now, within runescape that can boost your prayer points and reduce the overall drain and 
essentially you can pretty much have a zero drain prayer points if you combine this and those prayer potions together so that you can do things uh, that really do produce uh, a lot more uh, experience per hour so if you are using light form or super heat form things like smithing etc then this is absolutely perfect and additionally with this it's like a massive bundle of benefits, really, when you look at it. You can get Seren Spirits, which have the chance of basically accessing the rare drop table. Uh, and this will be able to basically have a chance of getting the Hazenwear Signet Ring as well. So if you do la land on the right drop table you could potentially get super super expensive drops from this now they're not going to be you know common this is not a way to make money you should not buy the grace of the elves to get the hazelmere's signet ring it's not going to provide you any real bon benefit but it is very very good at getting you extra gp an hour and it is consistent at least if you are actively playing the game because the seren spirit spirit spawn they last 30 seconds you have to basically just click on them and you get a random drop from the rare drop table and once that happens you know you're looking at probably in the region of maybe 50,000 GP per rare drop table uh, which is not bad considering you add that on over the course of your entire account and whenever you're doing skilling, especially if you're maxing, this is going to generate a lot of cash in the overall sense, as well as having, if you ever get the Hazelmere Signet Ring, a massive, massive boost. So yeah, I think that this is something you should always do. Uh, and I think that that is definitely something that you want to be doing whenever you can and trying to go towards the grace of the elves, especially if you your goals are to max your account and you're very uh, far away, at least when you buy it. Then you have the additional ability of being able to use signs of the porter, which is something that I think a lot of people neglect within uh, RuneScape. And that is because the charges that can basically be stored onto the Grace of the Elves up to 500, bearing in mind that 500 charges mean that you can... AFK for a long long time doing activities like archaeology maybe you want to send your material straight to the bank and that is exactly how it works and they're not like a partial kind of one where it only sends so many percentage of it every single thing that you ever get from the uh, necklace um, when you have it charged up with 2500 or whatever the charge you want to store on there it will then send them all to your bank. And this is fantastic for a lot of skills if you're doing wood cutting potentially and you, do, you just want to spend the gold um, to be able to just speed up the training method where you don't have to go to a bank anymore, although it probably would cost you because you do have to charge the uh, Grace of the Elves with signs of the porter, which cost you money, of course. And if you aren't earning the money back from the material that you're getting from the gathering skill or whatever you're using the charges on, then you're not going to be able to earn that money back so yeah it will cost you in some regards but maybe that's worth it for the training speed uh, and the ease of playing um, but not only that of course with this you also have the ability to turn it on or off so if maybe you want to use it but only 100 uh, charges you can do that you just click it on and then you right click on the item and turn it off and that is going to be really really good uh, and so you can use it for loads of different item uh, basically eventualities and so yeah i think that this is really really good uh, for this so to be honest with you I think that this is an item I would really recommend to newer players that have maybe the money lying around. Maybe you want to save up to do this, especially if you're a skiller or maybe you've maxed out your combat stats and you're really looking now to progress a lot of your other gathering skills uh, within the game to be able to then boost it up and get your account to the eventuality of having a maxed account. And this is one of the key things that I used from my max grind. Now, something that I didn't really realize about myself and that I neglected for a long, long time within RuneScape was the use of incense sticks, which can be used to basically gain a whole host of additional benefits to literally just playing the game. And it's going to improve a lot of processes, such as, for example, gaining an extra 2% increase to base XP gain, which sounds like a small amount, but when you compare that over the course of you know four and a half billion xp two percent becomes 
a massive chunk of the amount of XP that you'd no longer have to get. And say if you need, you know, 1 million XP, it's going to save you 20,000 XP. Now, seems like a small amount. Multiply that by the fact of most skills to reach level 99 is about 14 million. Uh, then, yeah, you're going to be able to save yourself at least a few hours of work and often if you combine uh, the incense sticks with a lot of the other XP bonuses you can really boost up the amount of uh, XP that you're going to be getting an hour from Torstol incense sticks which give you up to a maximum of 2% increase like we've talked about or alternatively maybe you want to basically uh, be able to have a chance of banking dropped or gathered items so you have with dwarf weed incense sticks the ability to basically max that out at 8% chance of banking uh, dropped or gathered items so whenever you receive them they get instantly sent to your bank for free so you don't actually have to take them there and this could be potentially very very useful in a lot of scenarios where you're skilling or maybe you're doing gathering skills uh, yeah this could be really really good and maybe you don't have the ability to actually uh, purchase the grace of the elves which we talked about previously this is an alternative that won't cost you 72 million out right other than that we also have the ability to increase potion timers by 30 seconds so maybe you want to use lantadime incense sticks which are definitely something you should use if you're using very very expensive um, incense sticks basically uh, or potions that you're going to be using then yes although they currently cost 24 and a half thousand gp for one incense stick you know maybe you the potion that you're using may last maybe five minutes or six minutes um, you can increase that and if it's going to be beneficial to do that or maybe it just saves you time maybe it saves you money uh, it just depends on the task that you're doing but maybe that could be an interesting thing that you use there's so many different incense sticks and i will hopefully leave a link in the description that you can go and check out the incense sticks and the different bonuses i can't go into them all within this video otherwise it will be massive uh, or maybe i'll leave a, a list on screen that you can just pause the video here but other than that I hope that that gives you some really, really useful items. And the key of this video was to make lots of items that are going to be useful and actually beneficial and maybe ones that you don't actually really think about uh, when you look at some of the items. Of course, purchasing armor and weapons is a given. Most people know about that, but maybe you didn't know about some of these and hopefully that will help you out. Of course, if you have anything else that you want to add to this video, then don't forget to leave that in the comment section and hopefully we can get a good discussion going as to some of the interesting uh, items that maybe I've missed out on this list and maybe that can get featured in another video very soon but other than that I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and I hope you'll join me back in the next video goodbye